What's up, everybody? This is attorney Dan Wynn here, and I want to talk uh, a little bit about uh, buying a business and um, what everyone, uh, every buyer should do when buying a business in California. So, you know, usually there's two ways to buy a business. Uh, it, it, um, it is usually a, a stock purchase or um, ownership purchase. So, for instance, if a corporation owns, owns, a, owns a business, sometimes um, the, the buyer will buy the stock in that particular corporation. Now, um, with that goes not only the assets, but also the liabilities. So um, sometimes the buyer doesn't want to do it this way. They don't want to inherit the liabilities. They just want to get the assets. And so they will do an asset purchase agreement, really just buy all the assets of the company, you know, any equipment, uh, customer lists, um, things like that, intellectual property. And um, one of the benefits of doing that is that they aren't inheriting the liabilities of the particular business. Now, in California, um, if the business owes outstanding tax, then the franchise tax board is going to come knocking on the door. And so one of the things in uh, asset purchase agreements is um, there's uh, usually a clause there that, um, that the, uh, there are particular representations that, you know, the, the seller does not know any of the outstanding liabilities other than the one that have been disclosed. Um, Sometimes there is a, um, a requirement to get a tax clearance certificate. And um, what this is, is uh, um, the, uh, one of the parties makes a request from the Franchise Tax Board that basically this company owns, um, owes no tax. And it is beneficial to the buyer so that they can um, uh, uh, know that, hey, the Franchise Tax Board is not going to go after the, them, the buyer, for pa uh, past taxes due uh, from, from the seller. And so um, it's really important that um, um, the buyer knows this. Um, I've had people that don't want to do this and, and because it does hold up the deal, it's, you know, usually you get 60 days after the request made. Um, if there's no certificate issues and, and there's no um, uh, taxes deemed owed generally. Um, so a lot of times this holds up the deal, but this is where proper planning comes into place and to account for that. And so um, what you don't want as the buyer is for the franchise tax board to come in later and say, hey, you bought this company and, um, and the old company owed, you know, owed $60,000 in taxes. Uh, that's a really nasty surprise. And uh, so it's important to get this particular um, uh, tax clearance. Now, one of the things that you got to understand is, you know, oh, I'm just buying the assets. I'm not buying the liabilities. Um, you know, for, to the franchise tax board, they uh, they don't really care about that. It's really, hey, is the company, you know, for all intents and purposes, an asset sale is really a, really a company sale, right? The the old company, the seller, is not going to really operate after the sale. So, you know, um, practically speaking, it is it is a company sale. And so, um, to kind of avoid these particular surprises, make sure you plan ahead of time, work with um, an experienced um, uh, advisor. To walk you through what due diligence you need to do, and make sure that you know there are no no uh, you know get get rid of or at least know of all the uh, liabilities, whether you buy an ass, do an asset purchase or a stock purchase, so that you can come in with a full picture of what the business looks like, and so you're not surprised when um, you know if, if someone comes knocking at your door. So hey, this is Dan talking about business purchases, getting clearance from the franchise tax board, and avoiding surprises. All right, this is Dan. I'll talk to you soon.